know, a lot of people always ask me, you know, hey, Cleve, uh, why you are the way you are, man? Uh, what kind of coffee you drink, you know? Or what, kind of, what kind of drug you use? I said, I'm, I'm really high in life. Um, I decided to change my life after my biggest accident of my lifetime on a, on a cruise ship. I was, I was a crew member for many years uh, on a cruise ship called uh, Voyager of the Seas. Uh, I was a night cleaner. I used to mix uh, lime away and force with bleach, you know, and it creates chlorine gas. Uh, thank Jesus I came back to life um, after eight days in coma. But um, I want to start when I was a little kid, when I was a spoiled brat, when uh, I never listened to my mommy nor to my daddy. I couldn't understand who was my best friends. Uh, my mommy will always tell me, Cleve, do your homework. Uh, study, Cleve. Do your homework. Study, Cleve. But um, I had so many toys and uh, video games like Atari, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo, uh, Nintendo 64. You see, uh, When my daddy was growing up, my daddy grew up extremely poor. My daddy uh, grew up with no shoes on, and uh, sometimes, you know, he would go sleep hungry. Uh, when he was growing up, he always said, I want to give my kids everything what I, why I didn't have. I want to give my kids everything what I didn't have. Uh, I learned that when you give your kids everything what you did had, sometimes, you know, we spoil them. Um, my daddy become a lawyer on the mainland of Honduras, on a public university. And my mommy is an accountant. Uh, my wealthy friends had bicycles and daddy buy me bicycles. Wealthy friends had trampoline so they can jump all day. We also had trampoline. Uh, my wealthy friends will go to United States and Disney World and Daddy will take us also to Disney World because he always said he want to give his kids everything what he never had. At 14, 15 years old, my parents become Christians and they said, oh, Cleve, you're not going anymore to the parties of the school. I don't want you to listen to the rap music, uh, cursing music, talking about gangs and prostitution and bad words. You're not going to the parties of the school, Cleve. But I was a rebellious kid that everything I wanted, daddy and mommy will always buy me. I start listening to the wrong group of friends. Jump the window, Cleve. Jump the window and... Wait till when your parents are sleeping. At 14, 15, and 16 years old, I start jumping the windows and going to the parties of the school. At 16 years old, a lot of, a lot of wealthy friends start to go to the dance clubs in their daddy's pretty car with a lot of money in their pockets. And now I didn't want to go to a party of school anymore. I wanted to go to the parties at the dance clubs at 16 years old and 17 years old. And one of my biggest problems is that I start to steal the car of my mommy and start to steal money from them. I was starting to become a little monster, a bad little boy that the last thing I wanted to do is get a book and study. I start to play with fire. Sometimes you see your little friends out there and 
ha ha ha, Jennifer is pregnant with Josh. And it was a big joke behind Jennifer, behind Josh. Carmen is frying at, and it was a big joke. It's not a joke when it happens to you. When it happened to me, it's when my wife called and said, Cleve, you're going to be a daddy? I'm frying at. I said, Jessica, I'm not ready to be a daddy. I can't finish my 10th grade, girl. She said, well, I'm not going to kill my son. I said, I didn't told you to kill him. That we can't be parents right now, Cleve. I'm not ready to be a, a father right now, Jesse. Well, my baby going to born. And if you help me, well, good. And if you don't help me, well, good. That my baby will born. My parents finds out. And having a father as a preacher, as a Christian man, it was very wrong. So they was angry at me and they sit me down, my daddy and my mom, and said, Cleve, look what you did. Look like you're doing man stuff, huh? Now, well, I want to see if you can back it up as a man, or you want your daddy to take care of this baby for you and your education. I had a big problem, guys. Uh, my biggest problem was my attitude. I had a stinky attitude. I was very arrogant. And I did the biggest mistake of my life. I mount them off. Oh, Dad. Oh, Mom. Well, I'll show you I don't need y'all. And I'll show y'all I can do it on my own. That's when my mom, he said, really? Without an education, son, you think it's easy out there? Okay, well, I'm going to get your job and record where I work so you can see that it's not easy out there on the field because you're not going to be in front of a computer, Cleve. You never study. Oh, mom, I don't want you to get me a job. I'm going to get my own job, mom. Really, Cleve? So where are you, where, where you going to work, huh? Where, where are you going to work? I'm going to the United States by my best friend. I'm going to New York by my best friend. This is where my daddy comes and say, well, Cleve, how many times I'm going to tell you, son, that your best friends are your parents? That you may have friends out there that they might wish you good but none of them will wish you to do better than them. Only your parents, Cleve, will always wish you to do better than them. But you want to go by your best friend? I'm going to buy your ticket so you can go to New York by your best friend. That's if your best friend will treat you the same way your parents been treating you since the day you were born, son. My problem was my stinky attitude, so I stopped bragging with my friends. Yeah, baby, I'm going to New York by my best friend, yeah, where they do the movies and stuff. Wow, we're going to New York. Because when I was a kid, my parents would always take us to Disney World. So I grew up saying, I want to live in the United States when I get big. My daddy said, now you're going to see the other side of the coin. You think it's easy out there without an education, son? It's not easy, Cleve. You're going by your best friend. They flies me from Roatan to the mainland of Honduras. And from the mainland, San Pedro Sula, I jumps in a plane straight to JFK Airport, New York. And my friend was waiting on there. He was waiting out there for me. And it was freezing cold because it was in March 2006. Cold, cold, cold. And he said, Cleve, here we sleep on the attic of a roof where there's no insulation, Cleve. Because here in New York it's so expensive, we sleep on the attic of a roof. He said, uh, Cleve, uh, 
He wakes up at five o'clock in the morning and we walks. He walks 20 minutes, 15, 30 minutes to the bus stop. And the bus takes us to Home Depots, 7-Eleven and Corners. We wait for the builders to pick us up to do anything. Roofing, demolition, painting, landscaping. I was a mommy's boy. I was a spoiled brat. Now I'm in New York with a friend on the streets waiting for a builder to pick me up to do anything as a helper. I start to meet a lot of beautiful people out there in New York. But there's a small group of them out there that they're a little bit rude sometimes. And one of the darkest experiences of my life is when some people will look down to me like if I was a piece of garbage and they will say, go back to your country, you damn alien. We don't want you here, you stinking alien. That was the day that I learned that love can equal love, but hate can equal hate. A lot of hate start to grow in my heart against a small group of racist people that I think they're racist when you call a human, another human, an alien. Because if I Google in my phone and I put alien, for me, it's, it's one of the most racist words that I ever experienced in my life. Alien. And if you put an alien, it's not a human being. It killed my innocence because I live on an island where my father will always tell me to call all my American friends that lives in my country, my brother in Jesus' name, and my sister in Jesus' name. My father never told me that because he's not from my country, I must call him an alien. I must call him my brother in Jesus' name. So it killed my innocence out there because I live on an island with all colors of people. My mother is white, white Spanish. My daddy is black, black English. My sister-in-law is a caracola. And I never live an experience like that. So I went and prayed on the attic of this roof with my stinky attitude to God. Why me, God? Why these people are calling me an alien when I'm a human being just like them? Why? I couldn't understand it. But in third world countries, we always have a saying, if you get weak, you're going to lose. You better have a heart of a lion. And that's how I fight it. 2006, 7, and 8, I lived in New York. We used to do uh, five months. You come home for one month. You go back for another five months. You come home for two months. Because when you have a tourist visa, immigration don't gives you more than six months to be on the country, even though if you have a 10 years visa. So we used to do five months. I used to do five months, then come home. In 2008, my father stops me. If you go back to the United States, son, I'm going to call immigration on you. I said, why would you do me that, father? Why would you do me that? Because it's not right, Cleve. I got you a tourist visa, not a working visa. It's illegal what you're doing. You're staying home, son. I was angry with my father, but deep inside of my heart, I knew he was right. And he got me a job with a nice, sweet American guy from Texas. His name is Roger Quick. 
He owns a beautiful company here called Jolly Rogers Catamaran and Sailboat, where they take people from the cruise ships on a snorkeling trip on a catamaran. I was a snorkeling guide. Out here to my left, we're passing uh, the garbage dump of our island where I love to come with my kids. And you can see how the families, how our families lives out here on tents. Families lives on tents out there, out here, and right here under this tree. These are Latino Spanish people from the mainland of Honduras, where I love to come with my kids. And we give them food and rice and beans and coffee and sugar and salt. This is where I show my kids that it could have been one of them. It could have been one of you. It could have been one of us. Because my daddy always says that in this life, there's not one human that can come and say, I pick to be white. I pick to be black. I pick to born in this country or that country. See the little kid there with his daddy. They're my friends. See? They're all my friends out here to your left. Como esta mi hermanito? Look how interesting is this. I start working on this catamaran and start meeting a lot of people uh, from cruise ships as a snorkeling guide. Follow me this way, guys. There's a turtle over here. And somebody from Royal Caribbean sees me and comes and says, would you like to see the world? This is my card. Send me an email. I'll get, I'll get you working on the cruise ships. If you like to see the world and work yourself up, we can help you so you can work on the cruise ships. My problem was my attitude and I start bragging with my friends. Yeah, baby. This time my parents will not be able to stop me because I'm going legal, baby. My brother, the lawyer, goes and tells my father, hey, dad, he was bragging out there that this time he's gonna go legal and he's gonna go work on a cruise ship and that you're not gonna be able to stop him. My daddy calls me and he sit me down. He said, son, not just because you're a man means you know it all. Only a fool knows it all. Don't you ever take your parents for granted, Cleve. He just tries to be your best friends, Cleve. You're bragging that you're gonna work on cruise ships? Did you knew that working for cruise ships is the new system of slavery and you're gonna be a little slave? And if you don't believe me, Cleve, look behind the cruise ships. They register them in third world countries like in Panama, because they'll pay you the minimum salary, Cleve. That's why on a cruise ship, they're full with Filipinos, India, and Indonesia, son, and poor Caribbean islands, because the only requirement on a cruise ship is to speak English, son. The ones from the first world country, Cleve, he's the captain, he's the engineer or entertainer. Don't do it, son. Stay home, Cleve. I will always go against my parents. I went to the mainland to some dangerous guys and I borrowed $2,400 to San Pedro Sula because I needed to send that to Miami, Florida so they can pay my plane ticket so I can meet the cruise ships in Barcelona, Spain. They fly me from Roatan to Houston, Houston, Germany, Germany, Frankfurt. I reached a place called Barcelona. The cruise ship was waiting on me out there called Voyager of the Seas. 
Welcome to Royal Caribbean, my supervisor. We want to let you know, Mr. Cleve, that here everybody works hard from the captain to the staff. We want to let you know, Cleve, that you're going to work as utility cleaner. You're going to clean the pots and the plates. You're going to work night shift from 6 p.m. till 6 a.m. You're going to clean the pots and the plates till 10, 11. Then you're going to go and clean the galleys where we make some chemicals like lime away with bleach, enforce with bleach. It can create chlorine gas, so you use this mask with filters. This is your apron, this is your gloves, this is your uniform, this is your boots. We need you to sign the contract leave that also says that you're going to share bunk beds with roommates. That you're going to win $634 a month. There is not one day off on the cruise ship. You work seven days a week. You can't work no less than 10 hours or not you're going to get a warning. You normally will be doing 12 hours. We need you to sign the contract leave. I said, uh, for $634, it's very little. I used to make that in New York in less than a week, making $150 in construction. I'm not going to sign that contract. I'd rather, I'd rather go back home, sir. He said, you can go back home. You already paid your wrong way ticket. I said, sir, I need the money back. I borrowed this money to some dangerous people in the mainland of my country because I went to San Pedro Sula to borrow the money to some guys that they're shark lunars that lends you money for high interest. Now I'm stuck out there and uh, on a cruise ship now and I wanted the money and they didn't want to give me my money back. They said the only way you get the money if you sign the contract the last day you leave the ship if you don't get fired or you don't quit. I was angry at one person. It was myself. Because when my father was telling me that working for cruise ships is the new system of slavery, I didn't believe him. And that's where I learned when my parents said, in this life, when you don't listen, you're going to feel, son. I learned the hard way, brother. Cruise ships are smart. That's why it's a billionaire industry. They start giving me training about ethics, about safety, and about loving the company. When I finished my eight months contract, they gave me three envelopes. The first one was my $2,400 back. Can you imagine how happy I was? The second envelope was a $500 bonus because I never get a warning on eight months. And the third envelope was my return contract with every bill paid because they're saying that now I was part of Royal Caribbean International. I came home with my stinky attitude in front of my parents. Look, Dad, look, now I'm part of Royal Caribbean International. I never again will have to pay to meet the cruise ship because now I'm part of Royal Caribbean. My daddy looks at my mother and my daddy said, Honey, the fish swallow the hook. You're brainwashed, Cleve. You're brainwashed. That's a billionaire industry that didn't need your money from the beginning, but they know that you come from a third world country where $2,400 is a lot of money for you, son. Please don't tell me you're going to go back and do your second contract on a cruise ship. Stay home, Cleve. I'll get you another job, son. No. I will always go against my parents. I always thought that my parents wanted to cut my wings off because I was arrogant and I had a stinky attitude. I went back and I did my second contract 
on a cruise ship in 2010. I went back and I did my third contract in 2011. I went back and I did my fourth contract in 2012 on a cruise ship as a night utility cleaner. I start to cough a little bit of blood. But I try to play Matro Man. I used to sneeze a little bit of blood, but I try to play Matro Man. One day in my bunk bed, guys. I start to have vertigo. And I start to cough blood from my mouth. And blood start to pour out my ears and my nose. Thank Jesus that that cruise ship was in Barcelona that day. And that's how they rushed me on the ambulance because my roommate runs and he called the doctors. Every cruise ship have doctors, general doctors, nurses in a clinic. But it was nothing they could do for me there. Thank Jesus that that cruise ship was in Barcelona. When I reached the hospital, family, I lived an out of bad experience. When the nurse started telling the doctor, Lo estamos perdiendo, lo estamos perdiendo, lo estamos perdiendo. Which it means we're losing him, we're losing him, we're losing him. It felt like two to three minutes when I was out of my body, guys. Not too many people in the world can tell you that they, they saw the body laying out and saw the nurse telling the doctor, we're losing him, we're losing him, we're losing him. I felt like two to three minutes that I was in coma for eight days. And that's when the doctor come and say, you're lucky to be alive, that you're not going to be able to walk for approximately two years because you have a brain damage, lungs messed up, and you will have vertigo. But don't worry because the cruise ship will take good care of you. It will send you to the best hospitals of your country, which, yes, they did. You get intoxicated because your mass wasn't sealing right. But don't worry, Royal Caribbean will take good care of me. Yes, they did. They're going to send you home. They sent me home. And you know who was waiting on me on the airport that day? None of my friends. It was my mommy. It was my daddy. It was my wife, it was my kids, my two sisters and my brother. None of my ghetto friends that put me in a lot of trouble and I put them in a lot of trouble. That was the day that I learned that my good friends is my daddy and my mommy. I was out there family and the doctor left that room and instead of giving God a a stinky attitude, I humbled myself and I said, thank you, God. Thank you for giving me another opportunity of life. But I want to know why all of these things have been happening to me, God. Why? He speaks to my heart. And he said, do you remember how disrespectful you used to be with your parents, Cleve? When the Bible say, honor your mother and your father so your days can be longer? Do you remember how you used to steal from them? And yes, I'm ashamed to tell you this, guys, but I'm, I used to steal from my mommy and my daddy. Do you remember, Cleve, when you had no respect for older people? And yes, I remember. Do you remember how you used to bully your sisters and your brother and your friends? Because I was a bully, because I couldn't fight. Do you remember how you used to say bad words? 
because I used to say a lot of bad words. Out of five words, four was bad words out of my mouth. Do you remember, Cleve, when you did this and you did that? Not when I learned that what goes around comes around. I learned that when you do good, good will follow you. I learned that when you do bad, bad will follow you. The only thing I could do there is, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry for all the things I did. I'm so sorry and I'm ashamed. And I felt like an angel came in my heart. My daddy calls it the Holy Spirit. And that's when I start to change in my life from negative to positive. It sends me home in a wheelchair because I couldn't walk good. I used to get vertigo and I used to go sideways. I did had no balance. My mommy was crying in front of the airport, in front of all the people there, calling me an angel. Oh, my angel! Oh, my angel! Uh, I wasn't an angel, mommy. I was your monster. But I want to let you know, mother, that from now on I'm going to honor you and I'm going to respect you and I'm going to love you, mom. Nobody can get be between me and my parents because I learned that they're my best friends. They're my good friends. My mommy took me to her house. She said, before you was a baby, son, before you was one years old, I show you to walk. And I promise you, Cleve, I will show you to walk again in less than a year. I promise you, Cleve. It took my mommy seven months to show me to walk again in seven months. My father-in-law, felt sorry for me because my wife went and cried to him and said that I wasn't going to be able to walk for a long time that I get intoxicated trying to help my family to feed my family and to please give me opportunity to work at her resort my father-in-law said Cleve would you like to do a discovery scuba dive I said, sir, I don't got the money to do a discovery scuba dive. That costs $100. I'm not in a condition to do that. He said, Cleve, I don't want your money. I said, Cleve, uh, you married my baby girl and I'm worried for my grandkids. You're like a boat without a direction out there, son. I own this resort since the 90s. I don't owe it from the bank, Cleve. I want to give you opportunity to do a discovery scuba dive. It's going to be on me, son. It's my treat. I did a discovery scuba dive, and it was one of the most beautiful things that my eyes had ever seen. When you go dive in, it's very different than when you go snorkeling. The word says it, dive in where the spotted eagle rays looks at you and you looks at them like if he's a marine life. When the turtles and the fishes are looking at you, where you make eye contact, very different than snorkel. I was jumping like a monkey in front of my father and I said, thank you very much for this opportunity, sir. He said, Cleve, this is just the beginning. Would you like to do your open water? said, sir, that costs $300. I don't got that kind of money. If you let me pay you when I go back to the cruise ship, I'll do my open water, sir, but I don't got it right now. He said, Cleve, your money will not make a difference in my life. You're not going to make me richer, and you're not going to make me poorer, Cleve. 
I don't want your money. You're like a boat without a direction, Cleve. I said, I'm going to feel that I'm going to owe you a favor, sir, if you don't let me pay you because I married your baby girl. Let me pay you. Let me pay you when I go back to the cruise ship. That's the only way I'll do my open water, sir. And that's how I did my open water. And I got a note of 99. My father-in-law was impressed and he said, son, would you like to become a dive master? I said, I don't got that kind of money, sir, to become a dive master. That's thousands of dollars, sir. I don't got that kind of money. He said, Cleve, he had a bottle like this. He said, do you see this bottle, son? I said, yes, sir. If I grab this bottle, Cleve, and I throw it to the ocean, do you think it will have a direction? No, sir. The wind and the current will take it wherever it wants, sir. He said, I got you. Let's say, Cleve, that this bottle is a boat on the ocean with no direction. I would love to be your anchor, Cleve, but I'm not willing to be your anchor if God is not the captain of your boat. God must be the captain of your boat, and I'll be your anchor. I promise you will be a good little boat, Cleve, but God must be the captain so the boat can have a direction. I learned that humbleness will always win arrogant and stinky attitude people because I had a stinky attitude and I humbled myself and I said, thank you very much, Mr. Admiral, for giving me A second opportunity that I took for granted from my parents when they wanted me to become an engineer. Thank you, sir. That's how I become a dive master. Being a dive master, I start to meet a lot of beautiful people from the United States. And I met two couple, and they said, Cleve, Would you do us an island culture tour? I said, what is an island culture tour? I said, Cleve, we want to see your island from a local perspective, not from a tourist perspective. We want to go home and we want to say we've been in Roatan. We don't want to see no tourist traps. We want to see the real island. I said, I will do your tour the way that I would have loved that somebody would have did me a tour when I was around the world because I was a crew member, but I only saw the tourist attractions. Like when tourists come to my island, they normally only go to West Bay and West End. When I did on the tour, they went and told all my scuba divers that it was a deep dive into Roatan, the real Roatan. And that's how I start doing tours with my scuba divers. My father-in-law calls me and he said, son, why you don't sell the Toyota Corolla and buy a van? If you buy a van, I will give you all the trips of my little resort to pick up my gas from the airport to the hotel and to the hotel to the airport. That's where I learned again that being humble will always be a win-win-win. And arrogant and stinky attitude people is a loose case. I listened to my father-in-law and we got the van. And I start going to the streets at the cruise ships when the cruise ship was coming. And I met Mr. Rick Swatson and Miss Linda. Miss Linda Swatson is a blind lady that she can't see. And we did them a tour and they said, Cleve, 
you change your perspective of Honduras. We're looking for a place to maybe retire someday, and this can be the place. When we go back to the cruise ship, can you wait for us an hour? We just want to go and bring our luggage, and we want to get off the cruise ship. I said, Mr. Rick, we can't do that. Why we can't do that? I said, because you're going to spend a lot of money to go back to the United States, sir. Go to the United States, get a flight, book your, your flight with ahead of time so it can be more reasonable. You don't have to worry about that, Cleve. I am a captain for United, and the flight is a 777. I go to Hong Kong, Australia, those the 12, 14 hours flights. I never been here, but I heard how beautiful is it. And now that you show it to me, I would love to stay here for a week and check it out. 45 minutes, this American couple was back with their luggage off the cruise ship. But in 45 minutes, I called my good friend, my daddy. Dad? I got some weird guys getting off the cruise ship, Dad. And I'm in a big problem, Dad. I don't know what to do, Dad. And my good friend comes and says, Son, how many times I'm going to tell you, if your problem, how solution? Why worry? And if your problem doesn't, how solution? Why worry? Just keep God in your heart 24-7. And don't worry about the, wet, about the rest. Dad, Dad, but what about the gas, Dad? What about the gas? Cleve, just own their experience for that week. And I promise you, they'll be back, son. What do you mean, Dad, own their experience? Stay with them for the whole week. And just have a good time with them for the whole week. Thank you, Dad. You must take them to immigration so immigration can stop their passport and give them the permit to be here if they want to be here up to 120 days. Thank you, Dad. I got off the cruise ship and we went at Sea Grape at my father-in-law resort, but it was full. So they decided to go to the beach house, the building that was under construction that you saw a few minutes ago. Before they wake up, I was right there with them, making sure they was okay and they was good. They asked me, Cleve, what's one of the things that you love to do with your family, Cleve? I said, I love to go to the garbage dump. And I love to take my kids up there and we love to give them rice and beans and coffee and sugar and salt to the forgotten people. He said, Cleve, if I come back someday with my kids, would you be nice to take us out there and we can feed the people? I said, yes, sir. That was in January when I met him off the cruise ship. January, February, in March, this beautiful American couple with his family was back here. And we did a tour. And when this American guy saw the families living on the garbage dump, this American guy was crying like a baby. I said, I'm sorry for bringing you here, Mr. Rick. He said, no, Cleve. Can we buy them food and give them rice and beans and coffee and sugar? He said, yes, sir. And that's how he fell in love with this island, mostly for the people from the garbage dump and a lot of single mothers with kids. He came and celebrate my birthday when I become 30 years old. And he said, Cleve, we built your page on Facebook and we decided to name it Cleve Tours and Adventures. And that's when my life started to change in a way because a lot of beautiful American people start writing beautiful things about me and my family. 
And that's when my parents start telling me that they were, they was proud of us for all the beautiful things that the Americans from the States and Canada was writing from us and Europeans, friends. This is a cool spot out here where we can eat some good food here, family.